Hello, this is the September 20th, 2018 meeting of the Northampton City Council. I'm Ryan O'Donnell. I'll uh, be presiding tonight. Uh, let me note the audio and video recording of these proceedings. And we always begin with a period of public comment. Um, it's an opportunity for the public to speak on any issue. We ask you only keep to three minutes. Uh, and it's your time to give your opinion to us so we don't engage in a back and forth. So having said all that, is there anyone who wants to provide public comment? Come on. No? Okay. No weekend plans you want to share? Nothing? Um, in that case, we will uh, take a roll call for the purposes of convening. Councillor Bidwell. Here. Councillor Carney. Present. Councillor Dwight. Here. Councillor Klein. Here. Councillor Labar. Present. Councillor Murphy. Here. Councillor Nash. Here. Councillor O'Donnell. Here. And Councillor Shara. Here. Okay. We're convened. Let me make a couple of announcements. Um, the first announcement of a, of a public hearing. Uh, it's the National Grid Verizon New England poll petition for North Main Street uh, in Leeds. And this is accordance with provisions of Section 22, Chapter 166 of the General Laws. Public hearing will be held on October 4th, 2018 at 7.05 p.m. here in the City Council Chambers, uh, 212 Main Street in Northampton on the petition uh, to erect poles and wires upon, along, or under, or across uh, one or more public ways. Uh, related, well, a similar one is um, National Grid Verizon New England poll petition for Audubon Road. Um, and this is the same thing I said for the other one on the same date, October 4th, 2018, uh, at 7.05 here in the council chambers. Um, the same purpose. Uh, I have no updates. Are there any updates from members of the council or announcements of Council Dwight? Uh, just Legislative matters has actually been rescheduled, so everyone knows it's, it will be next month. And and one of the items also to be discussed in that meeting uh, will be rescheduling the following uh, meetings because they all fall on holidays. The nature of signing up and putting meetings on Monday. So, but uh, Laura will post them in due course, and as they come up, and just let folks know. So it's not the twenty fourth. It is. It is the 24th. I'm sorry, the 24th. Yeah, I'm skip I just erased an entire week. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Yes. Any other announcements? Um, I don't know if this is appropriate at this time, but I just want to go back to the poll petition. There's a sure. little bit of an incongruence in the addresses. Um, it says 212 Main Street. Oh, oh, no, no, no. I'm so sorry. I was looking at North Main. So North Main Street in Leeds, I think is inaccurate. I think it's it's either Florence or it's Main Street in Leeds. So I just would like a clarification hmm. for the future on that. Well, maybe we can. If it's in Leeds, it's sure. like <coughs> Main <coughs> Street. North Main Street is Florence, I, I guess, right? Up until yes. the. Okay. I, I believe right so, unless there's a section of it. David, you could say, don't you think? Is there a section of it down by the VA that could be still North Main? I don't yes, think it is. Okay. So maybe that is still North Main. Well, okay. It helps pinpoint where we're talking about anyway, right? Um, because it's Northampton, we name streets five times before they leave town, so. Right. But that one, North Main Street, I believe, extends well, used right to be up. sections, but we took them all out. Right, so right. They just changed names. I think it stays North Main right up <coughs> to Haydenville Road. Yeah. Haydenville Road. It says, I'm sorry, Haydenville Road, yes. Yeah. Okay. So just below, just uh, south of the intersection of Florence Street, it says. What really threw me off is I was looking at Main Street of Council Chambers. Ah. So I thought that there was, <laughs> so excuse me for that, but I'm glad we clarified. No, that was important to clarify. Thank you. Um, anything else from the Council? Uh, Council Ford. Uh, yes, tomorrow at uh, 3 o'clock will be a community open house for the Conway School of Landscape Design, which you may know after having been originated, founded in Conway, as you said, and then located in East Hampton for a while. Their permanent new home is up in Village Hill, in the old carriage house, which has been totally refurbished, and that is the new home of the Conway School of Landscape Design. So we're very happy to welcome to the city and to Ward 2. And the community open house is tomorrow at 3. And several weeks later, or a week later, there will be an official blue ribbon cutting out. But the community is welcome to see the new Conway School. Thank you very much. Council Board 4. Yes. Um, first, I want to, I think we've been remiss at our birthday uh, commenting, but 
we missed Councilor Nash's birthday last month, I'm sorry, but I want to acknowledge Sam Hopper's birthday, which was yesterday. And um, <laughs> moving on from that, this Sunday is the Northampton Public Schools and School Local Carnival. It's from 12 to 4 at JFK. It will be amazing. Um, there are carnival games, there are inflatable obstacle courses, there is a celebrity dunk tank where you get the chance to dunk um, our Democratic State Legislative nominees, Joe Comerford and Lindsay Sabadoza, as well as the superintendent, Dr. Provost. Um, I am running the prize booth, so come visit me and get, I'll hook you up with unicorn slime snot and bouncy balls and all sorts of stuff. Um, so that is this Sunday. If you need help with transportation, there is a free shuttle bus that will be available. It's stopping at all four Northampton Elementary Schools, as well as Florence Heights and Meadowbrook Apartments. For more information, go to the, face, the school local Facebook page. And also, they need more volunteers. So please sign up, support our public schools, come give an hour of your time. It's going to be really fun. If you know any children, bring them. Adults, you come too. And then my last announcement is next Tuesday, the 25th at 6.30 here in Chambers, um, is a 25% design hearing for the King Street Corridor Improvements Project. That is for the section of King Street from Bright Street to Church Street. And um, that's being run by MassDOT. And come, and this is a section of King Street that needs some work. And a lot of people are interested in seeing some changes there. So please come, express your views to MassDOT. And that is again Tuesday, 6.30 here. That's it. That's great. Anything else? Good. Okay, well, thank you. So, um, updates from the mayor or communications from? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, we'll take care of the consent agenda, which contains the following items. I'll read them. If you want to remove them, let me know and we'll do that. Uh, it contains the minutes of September 6, 2018. Appointments to various boards which have received positive recommendations from city services. So, a vote will be equivalent to the actual appointment. <coughs> Those are John Omasta of 165 West Farms Road. Um, Oh, excuse me. To uh, agriculture. Yeah, agriculture. Thank you very much. Agricultural Commission. Uh, as well as Earl Chip M. Parsons of 137 Mill Valley Road. Uh, to the Arts Council, uh, Kevin Pomerlo of 63 Ravel Avenue. To the Central Business Architecture Committee, Joseph Blumenthal, Blumenthal of 39 Chapel Street. The Disability Commission, Linda L. Kekos of 220 Rocky Hill Road, Florence. To Northampton Housing Authority Board of Commissioners Emily Laufer of 241 Jackson Street, uh, Northampton. Uh, to Zoning Board of Appeals, David Bloomberg of 86 Vernon Street, Northampton. Uh, consent agenda also contains the following for referral to city services. To the Agricultural Commission, Richard Jasky of 774 Bridge Road. To the Public Shade Tree Commission, Susan Lofthouse of 15 Stoddard Street. To the Ener Energy and Sustainability Commission, Aiden Maynard of 12 Perkins <coughs> Avenue. To the Transportation and Parking Commission, Devin Bruce of 46 Columbus Avenue. Um, and that concludes the consent agenda. There's a motion to approve it. So moved. Made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, any abstentions? So that is approved. Great. And we will, looks like, immediately go into recess for the Committee on Finance. Thank you. Laura, would you call our roll, please? Sure. Councillor Murphy. Here. Councillor Carney. Present. Councillor Labar. <coughs> Present. Councillor Shara. Here. Excellent. First item is approval of our minutes of September 6. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Second. Second. Any alterations or corrections? Hearing none. All in favor? Please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right. Our first um, order tonight is authorizing the mayor to accept industrial park lot and allow its use for Damon Road reconstruction. This is 18.161. Order that whereas the Northampton Redevelopment Authority, a quasi-independent authority of the city of Northampton, initially acquired title to what became known as the Northampton Industrial Park, and whereas after selling lots and creating roads, the Northampton Redevelopment Authority only retains title to a very small amount of the original industrial park, including a parcel at the southeast corner of Industrial Drive and Damon Road, Assessor's Map, ID 18D197, and whereas some of this land is important for the planned reconstruction of Damon Road and the <laughs> installation of additional sidewalks on Damon Road <coughs> and the northerly end of Industrial Drive, and whereas on September 12th, 2018, the Northampton Redevelopment Authority voted to transfer 
this remaining land to the city of Northampton, order that the mayor is authorized to accept a deed for the property and to grant such licenses, access agreements, or easements as necessary to allow the land to be used for the Damon Road construction project. Do we have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second? Second. And the mayor's here to talk about it. And Mr. Fiden's here to talk about it. Mr. Fiden's here to talk about it. Thank you. So this is basically a housekeeping operation after 40 years. The redevelopment authority once owned the enti entire industrial park. They sold all the lots. They transferred, they accepted the streets, which came to the city, and they're left with just a sliver of land. Some of you may remember a few years ago, we came to you to have a portion of that land released so we could put the traffic signal up at end of Industrial Drive. Um, at this point, the reconstruction of Damon Road is going to include a sliver of land on the Damon Road side and sidewalks on the Industrial Park side. Um, and the Redevelopment Authority, rather than just sort of coming before you every time they want a sliver of land, it makes sense just to transfer this to the city and then the city controls it going forward. And this is the piece where the sign is, right? That's correct. Where the industrial drive sign is. That's correct. Any questions for uh, Director Fiden on this one? Uh, Councillor. Yeah, so uh, on the map, that's this right here. Yeah, and I passed out, the other, this thing I passed out today is probably easier to read. And so it's, it's a small triangle on the north okay. east corner. So it's next to the Dunkin' Donuts that's currently under construction. It's the parcel between Industrial Drive and that new Dunkin' Donuts. All right, thank you. Yeah, it's hard to tell it's even a standalone parcel except for the sign that says industrial drive. That's right. Any other questions for Director Fine? All right, hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next we have 18162. This is an order authorizing waiver of right of first refusal and conservation commissional acceptance of a Park Hill Road parcel. Order that whereas the city of Northampton holds a master in law chapter 61A lien on 38.7 acres on Park Hill Road extension, map ID 49, lot 12, which provides the city with a right of first refusal to purchase the land if it is ever removed from uh, Mass General Law Chapter 61A, and whereas the city has secured an agreement for 13 acres of land along the Manhan Brook to be donated to the city as permanently protected greenway, if the city waives our right of first refusal consistent with land acquisition goals in the city's open space and recreation multi-use trail plan, 2018 to 25, and whereas the site is not appropriate for affordable housing or other city development, and the Agricultural Commission does not object to this transaction, will therefore it be ordered. The City Council authorizes the Mayor to waive the City's right of first refusal pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 61A contingent upon the proposed land donation and further the City Council authorizes the Conservation Commissions to purchase or otherwise acquire for conservation and conservation <laughs> purposes as provided in Mass General Law Chapter 40 subsection 8C any fee easement or conservation restriction as defined in Mass General Law Chapter or subsection 31, or any other interest in the above land and any immediate adjoining land with such related restrictions and arrangements as the city determines are agreeable. Further, that the city council hereby accepts such conservation restrictions. Further, that the conservation commission is authorized to grant conservation restrictions on any land so acquired. Do we have a motion to finance? Take a motion. Second? Second. Second. Uh, Director Fine, you're on again, I think. So I passed out a survey on this property. So this is, so remember, there's actually sort of two Park Hill Roads. There's Park Hill Road that comes in from the east, and there's Park Hill Road extension that comes in from the west. They don't connect because the area in between is sort of old, gravelly road that's hard to travel. This is land that's basically a long Park Hill Road extension. It will in two, include two future building lots that are on the part of Park Hill Road, which is still Tra travelable, includes land which we would like to come to the city, which is along the brook. So it's a very nice conservation area, connects to other other open space, and then includes a field where the buyers of the property hope to do a solar photovoltaic field, um, sort of about the same size as what the city did on, on the landfill. Um, and so to do that, they have to take the land out of Chapter 61A. They haven't done this yet, so it hasn't kicked in our right of first refusal. But we've sort of negotiated with them and saying, we'll waive our right to the right of first refusal if you donate this property to us. They've been very agreeable and are happy to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and frankly, the, what they're paying for the land, I think it's more than we could afford to pay by anyway. So it's mm -hmm. not a lot of options for us. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. So when you're saying that this property is 
around down by Park Hill Road. You're talking about this property coming off of Glendale Road to the left to the Park Hill Road extension. That's correct. Coming down that extension to the left, there's a field there also. Is that the same owner of that other property that we're talking yeah, so about? Yes, this includes that field. So are we also looking at that property to the left line? So Coming into Park Hill Road extension to the left. Yep. Okay, that same owner owns that property. And are we going to be buying that also or just what you're talking about? So the entire parcel from the last home on Park Hill Road extension the to the first home on Park Hill mm -hmm. is all owned by the same person. We would be acquiring only the land that includes the brook and about 100 feet from the brook. So we would acquire that. The rest would remain in private hands and they would move forward on solar PV and that. So the field would eventually become solar panels, assuming they get. But what about the property coming into Park Hill Road extension that is owned by the still, by the owners? Yes, yeah, so it's all included with this, this parcel. Okay, because you just said you were interested in back of the Benoit's where the brook is and in that area. So we would acquire the land along the brook. The new owner would acquire the rest of the property. And what would go there? So is it suitable for building? Uh, the right off the paved section of Park Hill right. Road Extension, it's suitable for two homes on um, the left. On the left. Okay. Then there's our land, and then yeah. the field. Um, we don't think it is suitable for building, and so we think solar voltaic is a good solution for doing it. Because mm -hmm. the only way they could develop that would be to pave between Park Hill Road and Park Hill Road Extension. And that would create a lot of cut through traffic, which wouldn't be desirable. So this is a nice use. It means we get taxes. It's not something that requires any services. Um, and it reduces pressure for someone to pave that road. And we're still having the people that are very interested in putting solar, correct? That's right. Which possibly means that same thing like at Willard's property with the solar firm that apparently so-called might be coming in there that we might be able to work on a fee that the city would get, but that would be the same thing with that? That's correct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So on the plan, parcel A and B are the proposed potential building lots. Correct. And parcel C is the brook parcel that conservation is getting. Correct. And parcel D is where the solar array is going. All correct, mm -hmm. yes. People playing the game at home, that place is what's going on. Uh, any other questions for Director Biden on this one? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive rec recommendation of finance, please. Aye. 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 And if it's okay, I'm not going to stay for council. What do you think? No. No. Okay. Please. Good night. Good night. Oh. Um, the next is 18163 in order to appropriate funds for the community preservation. Order that the following amounts be appropriated or reserved from the fiscal year 2019 Community Preservation Fund estimated revenues of $1,491,000, uh, $1,271,000, the FY, FY19 local assessment estimate, and two hundred and twenty dollars estimated from the state match. Uh, and this is for fiscal 19 purposes. Um, $164,000 from the FY19 estimated total to the Community Preservation Fund Open Space Reserve, $164,000 from the FY18 total estimated revenue uh, from CPA to the Community Preservation Fund Historic Preservation Reserve, $164,000 from the FY19 total estimated CPA reserve to the Community Preservation Affordable Housing Reserve, $65,000 from the FY19 totally estimated total estimated CPA reserve to the Community Preservation Fund Administrative Account and $934,000 from the FY18 total estimated CPA reserve to the Community Preservation Fund Budgeted Reserve Account. Also, the following amounts be appropriated from the Community Preservation Fund Budgeted Reserve for FY18 Community Preservation Bonding Payments. $65,000 for principal and $12,150 for interest for the Bean Farm Bond. Uh, 95000 for principal and 26500 for interest for the Florence Fields bond. 265000 for principal and $18,550 for interest for Pulaski Park bond one. 
$65,000 for principal and $19,950 for interest for the Pulaski Park uh, 2 bond. Um, do we have a motion to finance? Motion. Second. Second. And you're back. So these are these are all the mandated pieces. So we have to put 10% aside each year for those three dedicated items, uh, open space, historic preservation, and housing. So we're doing that. I guess we don't legally have to put money aside for administration, but then we couldn't administer it. So each year we put money aside in administration. And then the rest goes in for future for appropriations. And then, of course, we have to pay back the bonds that, that CPA and then you all authorize. So all required, you will see in December, <coughs> the recommendations for how to spend this year's rounds for where this flexibility. Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, <coughs> these are just reserved for these purposes. You, you'd be back with specific projects later in the season, so we're just allocating this to reserve and awaiting the committee's recommendation for spending it. That's correct. The, the applications are due, I think, this week, mm -hmm. so that the committee will so be evaluating the next we'll couple of We'll be months. back in the future. Uh, Councilor. Wayne, how long will it be on the bean farm bond and so forth? I don't know the answer to that. <coughs> look it up and get back. Can you do that? Sure. Mm -hmm. And the same with the Florence Fields okay. bond. We'll do them all. Mm -hmm. sure. um, any other questions for Director Feiden? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Excellent. <coughs> all right, the next is 18164 in order to authorize pilot agreements with CED Northampton Solar LLC. Whereas a solar electric generating facility has been pr proposed for privately owned property on Burt's Pit Road by CED Northampton Solar LLC, which property is shown as parcels 70, 7901 and 8001 on Assessor's Map 35, and whereas developers require an accurate projection of prospective expenses with respect to the real estate and personal property. Um, that is taxable under the law, and whereas, given the difficulty in determining taxable value for a solar electric generating facility, it is in the city's interest to have an agreement whereby the city is assured of a fixed stream of tax income from the project, and where it is best interest of the city to develop and to enter into an agreement fixing the payments that will be made with respect to all taxable real and personal property incorporated within the project for the term of the agreement. Order that the mayor be authorized to negotiate and execute a pilot agreement pursuant to Mass General Law Section 59, Section 38B with CED Northampton Solar for a 5.6 megawatt direct current facility on two parcels of land totaling 49.7 acres located at Burt's Pit Road Assessor Map 35 parcel, parcel 7901 and 8001. Such terms and conditions as the mayor deems advisable. Do we have a motion to finance? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Questions for the mayor? So by way of background, this is uh, the, the whole issue of solar fields and how they're treated in terms of property tax as well as personal property tax for equipment has been an area of dispute. Um, and so the DOR recommends, has begun recommending sort of the best practice that people instead avail themselves of this chapter of Mass General Law, which allows you to enter into a pilot agreement, um, which basically means you reach an agreement on what will be the, the tax revenue um, uh, over, in this case, I believe it will be a 20-year period. Um, there have been attempts to estimate it, and um, there have been several cases that have gone to the Appellate Tax Board. It's been quite contentious, so generally what happens is <coughs> most of these new developments, people are, are um, negotiating a pilot. I think you alluded to the fact that there may be this other development that will probably do the same thing. Um, so uh, this basically under Mass General Law uh, gives, uh, authorizes me to go ahead and do that. Um, we're working with the Board of Assessors, we're working with the attorney for the Board of Assessors, um, and, uh, and we're hoping to get something, um, you know, uh, an agreement worked out that will give them a well, first of all, give us a, a, um, a revenue source that we believe is fair uh, to the city, but it gives them a predictable revenue stream that they can build into their model for the whole uh, project. So, uh, Councilor Dwight. Uh, so, so normally we would consider them taxable anyway, although as you seem to suggest, there's some ambiguity there. They are. They are it, it's a it's a private company that's buying private land. And and putting, um, uh, and putting a system on, on there, right? Putting a system on, and that's part of where the ambiguity has been because it's an electric generating plant, um, and several communities have 
attempted to you know figure out how do you how do you tax that equipment? Does you know the equipment depreciates over time, um, and and the underlying land, and so um, and they've been many communities have been challenged and taken to the appellate tax board, mm -hmm. um, and and in some cases have been uh, overthrown or overruled. So it's a strange area of taxation, and maybe our resident former assessor can speak to it in terms of why it becomes tricky. But um, so this is what many communities do. You know, East Hampton, you know, other communities around us do a, typically do a pilot. We actually did a pilot with the, um, with Amoresco as well um, for the land rights to that uh, for that particular solar array, because even though it's on city land, it's still taxable property that's, right, that's, that's personal system. property. The normal, I mean, the, the, my source of my confusion is normally pilots, of course, payment in lieu of taxes. We, we basically try to negotiate with uh, previously exempt. Uh, not, not in uh, every case. Enterprises. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's the commonly held term, but there, there. Are, a payment in lieu of taxes can literally be that for even a taxable entity. So, so we, yeah. we actually have the authority and the power to literally exempt someone from ta uh, uh, standard property taxation. In lieu of this agreement, as yeah, as, we, yeah, as an agreement. alternative. And this particular section of Mass General Law is specifically for energy facilities like these. Um, and so, and you know, and we do have other examples in the city. For example, um, we, uh, a couple of years ago, negotiated a pilot with the fairgrounds, which is tax exempt generally, but they have taxable enterprises on the property. Um, things like the, you know, the um, Paradise City Arts Festival, where they're renting the buildings, or when they're renting the buildings for other functions. That's not part of their tax exempt mission. And so we've had a long there's been a long back and forth between the city and the fairgrounds about that. And in fact, the fairgrounds at one point decided to go to the appellate tax board to let them um, settle the issue. And in, in lieu of that, we decided let's just sit down and work out a, an agreement as to how um, we would have that worked out. So it, it's not uncommon, but it's really a unique kind of niche thing relative to solar. Thank you. So just to confirm, and then I have a question. This is a mandatory pilot. So in other words, it's not like they can opt out of paying the pilot. Oh, no. They, they're, there's going to be an agreement, and it's going to be spelled out over 20 years, and it's going to you know, have very specific um, revenue uh, projections. And that's part of it, too, is that there's a, you know, there's a risk in terms of, for them, in terms of what the generation is going to be over the full 20 years and what the return is going to be and what, you know, what the value of the equipment is going to be. Um, so no, we will, I mean, that's the other good thing for the, for, from a community's perspective is we get to lock in a certain amount of revenue that we know is so going to. The question though that I have is, um, so for who is this energy being generated? Is it for business is it for sale is it they're going to be sold? selling it to the grid so how is this not actually a business venture and commercial it's totally a business venture yes. yeah it's 100 percent a business and venture. so how is that not taxable i'm just curious it is taxable it. no it is taxable completely taxable and we could um we could have you know the assessor's office go out and try to calculate what they believe the personal property value is of the solar array they could also attempt to figure out what the what the land value is, and we could send them a tax bill. Um, so the follow-up question I would have is, if we're locked into a 20-year pilot with them, and if, in fact, assessment of what they're earning and how, what the taxable income, in fact, is, or the taxable value is, um, is actually higher than the pilot, can we, at some point, opt out of the pilot agreement and charge them essentially what the city is doing. Um, no, no, I mean, that's part of the agreement. And we would try to typically there'd be some escalation in it over time. And we would, you know, we would account for that. So, I mean, that's part of what we would be. Um, escalation in the pilot. Yeah, there, I mean, over time um, in terms to, to try to account for that. So, I mean, so we're not part of what we're into the amount that the pilot is. Yeah, we would be locked into an amount. We would be spelling out over the 20 year life of the, um, and again, if you, 
if you Google this, you'll see that you know all across Massachusetts, this is how most of uh, most communities deal with this is through a pilot, and that's sort of what the DOR has be begun recommending, just because of the fact that it's a challenging field. I don't know if you want to. Well, Councillor Don had a question, then I'll chime in a little bit. Sure. How long is the pilot for the fairgrounds again? Isn't it five years? Just off the top of my head. Um, no, it's actually. Is it Twenty. Um, no, it's it's actually. I think it's not even. I think it's a it's a continuously. I'd have to go back and look. Mm. I'd have to go back and look. But that one has um, certainly no nowhere near twenty. Obviously, no. different apples and oranges. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Councillor Bidwell. Yeah. Uh, I, I was also curious about how other communities have, have, have arrived at mm -hmm. the, the formula within the pilot. And I guess both parties have incurred some risk. We, mm -hmm. if, if, if in fact it turns out to be tremendously productive, then we may wind up getting less than we would otherwise have had. And on the other hand, if they don't hit their targets, then, then they're the losers. But is there some, so, so it's not tied in any way to their uh, annual it is tied uh, to revenue number? It is tied in some ways to kilowatt <coughs> average that they generate. And there's a, usually the way that if you look at most of these agreements, there's, they're guaranteeing us a certain percentage of that in terms of what it's based on, what the taxation's based on. So if you look at most of these agreements, okay. so, um, so we're in the middle of that conversation with them right now and looking at different agreements and um, they've proposed something and we're crunching the numbers on it and are going to propose something you know back to them okay. um, um, so but this is a you know and, and some of the other variables are just the cost of the equipment you know because there's been rapid advancements in some of the you know technology um, so some of the pilots from you know a few years ago are different from these so we're trying to account for all of that okay. um, Councilor. Just Councilor Kwan has a question. Oh, sure. Just a quick follow-up. Um, is this in some way, is the attempt to incentivize <coughs> solar or it's just an agreement because it's kind of this nebulous taxation It's I think it's, beca it's more because of gray area. No, it was nothing, it was not part of any, you know, it's, it's just, it's okay. become sort of the common practice basically for, um, for these types of arrays. And again, you can, I don't know, you Google pilot municipalities in Massachusetts and you'll, you can read them from Chicopee, you can read them from all across the state. It's a, a green field, East Hampton, other communities, that's sort of how we do it. I mean, I haven't looked into it personally, but it, if, in this case, they own the real estate. Mm -hmm. So it would be real estate taxes because they own the land the array's on and they own the, and the array. But typically, if it's an income producing thing, which it would be, you would value it by doing um, doing an income analysis of the cash flow on it and then coming up with a cap rate to determine what the value is. But in a new industry like this, you've got to come up with a reliable cap rate based on this industry, and maybe that doesn't exist yet, and that might have been what they were saying at the, at the ATB was, you know, you're trying to do a cash flow on us to come up with a net operating income but you don't have a good capitalization rate because there's not enough of these yet to determine what it is for this industry. So that may have been why people said, well, until that exists, we'll just do a pilot because we're vulnerable figuring out property tax by income because we don't have a reliable cap rate for this industry. So we'll just do pilots. And at some point, once the industry matures a little bit and there's a reliable cap rate project to project um, that we can then do it that way. I think one of the problems would be that it's slightly political, the rate that's paid for this electricity, and it's really high right now. But let's say at some point uh, the state says, listen, you know, we're tired of paying top dollar for this electricity being subsidized by conceivably low and moderate income people paying more to subsidize the rate, so we want to drop the rate. Then the whole value would change. So it, it could end up being in our advantage, at, you know. Councilor. I mean, normally what we do in Circumstance with established business, of course, is to reassess as we go. In this case, will we reassess the pilot after 20 years and then have to renegotiate another pilot, or do they get incorporated into at that point? Do we suspect we would renegotiate, we would be renegotiating. Mm -hmm. um, and again, uh, you know, and, and I gotta I actually, um, yeah, 
we would re renegotiate, and, and I've got, I'm actually now starting to doubt whether it's 10 or 20 now that I think about it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that would be the plan. And I think it's basically they've got a, they've got a sort of a, a build out cost right. for when you're putting one of these things in, the construction, the, the costs, and they've got a model for how it's going to pay for it, whether it's going to pay for itself. I don't know, just from not having been directly involved in it, but I'd encourage 10 because of yeah. the fact it is yeah. that you can't establish a cap rate on a business that's yep. in its infancy, that it may be in 10 years you can get a good cap rate, you can value these things very accurately, and then it just falls back to being any other commercial property, and, and you can do it that way. Yep. But I'm happy to look into it, but I, I haven't, but that would be what it sounds like. Councillor uh, Liddell. Yeah, I would just say I agree it would be nice to look into the term, and it seems like the term should be in the order just because it sort of substitutes for normal taxation, which, as Councillor Dwight, I think, suggests, if we were doing it the normal way, the city council should have a role in explicitly um, setting, you know, maybe not the, the terms of the agreement, but pr maybe the length. So I would be curious if you investigate what yeah. term you think. What I could do is come back to you on second reading, and, um, and I'll try to even bring you a, um, a draft of what we're looking at with more detail on that. We're sort of in the, be begin nice. we're in the yeah. beginning stages, but part of what this is is authorizing me to be able to do it. I mean, typically, yeah. neither you nor I would be involved in this process because it would be the Board of Assessors. Mm -hmm. um, and the Board of Assessors would file a, give, send them a tax bill. They would file an abatement. Um, we would likely reject the abatement, and, and then they would uh, the ATV. <laughs> appellate tax board. Um, and what's happening a lot of places is where this is playing out is that the appellate tax board has been ruling against municipalities. But the other, the other, yeah. you know, since this is kind of a special decision for a particular parcel, yep. yeah, I think that that would be appropriate. And the only other comment I would make would be, um, to, it's based on some of the conversation I've heard. I think we have a tendency, or I'm, I'm hearing, you know, how are we going to make this come out to our best interest? Are we going to profit or, or lose by this, when in fact we don't really think about that in terms of taxing other property in that way. The question is whether it's a fair rate. Um, and so I, I, let's, not, let's not think of this as an investment we're making. It's really a question of how are we going to charge these people for the normal services as we charge others. Yeah. Councilor Klein, did you have another question? Um, Councilor O'Donnell touched on it. Okay. <coughs> uh, Councilor Klein. <coughs> um, I agree on all those points and actually the 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 thing that concerns me, I mean, we also have another new industry that's untested, and, and, and that's the marijuana industry, of course, as well. I mean, did I see, mm -hmm. you know, would we be seeing a trend in the state of Massachusetts because they really, literally, because they have this, you know, janky uh, system that's designed to re generate revenue as opposed to doing income taxes? That, I wouldn't think so at all. But I mean, are they going to, are we going to be considering pilots for every new industry that doesn't have a data set that we can refer to for the assessors? I wouldn't because in this case, they're going to be paying um, a sales tax, uh, right. which is assessed by the state at a certain rate so that the product, is, so they're basically going to be like any other retailer. And, and the only personal property that gets assessed will be the normal personal property for any any business cash registers and those you know computers and those kinds of things and then there's the building itself which we you know the values for the retail buildings are pretty much set so and again I don't know if the that, that would be the difference in that solar arrays are very specific for that industry but a marijuana growing facility is in a warehouse warehouses have value as warehouses not specific to the industry a retail outlet is in, in retail square footage which you can value because if it's not a marijuana retailer, it could be a coffee shop. It, it could be a coffee shop. So, you know, those there isn't a problem with. What messes up, I think, solar is that it's a build out unique to that industry that really has no other, no other party would have demand for it. So it's it's value. It's almost what they call a value in use, which is specific to that industry, which requires a specific set of data that may not really totally exist yet. Well, that's I mean, yeah, I understand. Repurposing would be challenging. <coughs> one the one thing is, is that solar wasn't invented a week ago it's it's been around a long time and solar arrays so I'm, I'm just I have no problem with this arrangement it's just that in it just me this is a reflection of my frustration with the state mm -hmm. and the Commonwealth and the way they decide how to conduct revenue 
systems and at the same time sort of make it up as they go along yeah. or leave communities to have to hash it out in well, unprecedented and, systems. And so. I agree with you totally they should take the lead on this because, for instance, our utility infrastructure, the gas pipes right. that are personal property, the electrical lines, the state does the values for those and gives them the municipalities because it's beyond the scope of any municipality right. to value the telephone company mm -hmm. infrastructure or the electric company, you know, they do that. They probably at some point, when this becomes a big enough hairball for 351 cities and towns, will step in and say, so many, so many megawatts, so many value. They haven't done that yet. So the other thing, I, I, what I will do, um, I will go, because I sort of speak assessorees, I'm happy between this meeting and the next meeting to go talk to them and have them explain to me exactly why the, the appellate tax board is spitting these things out and how they'd been valued, because I'm sure within their organization, they're tearing their heart on talking to each other. I tried this, it didn't work. I tried that, it didn't work. I'll go talk to them about that and I can bring that back, which That's I haven't done yet. But be I'd be uh, very interested in exactly wh what reality is in the minds of the appellate tax board that they can't let right. one of these models that's been proposed, probably by bigger communities than us, why they've been spitting it out and saying it's not good enough. So I'll ask them. I would Thank only you. add to what you said that you may remember several years ago, the Appellate Tax Board actually overthrew all a bunch of communities' uh, assessments of wires for yeah. uh, utilities, right. and we ended up getting uh, yeah. um, hosed on that deal. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so okay. that was so. Again, it's I think it's it's the <coughs> the electric utility piece of it, and um, it's just not like it's unlike any other. You know. A retail building is a retail building is a retail building. It's just it's such a unique thing. Yeah. So um, there's a certain I mean there is a risk, but you know. And no, no. I, I and I, I think to Councilor O'Donnell's point, that yep. it's we're not talking about an investment scheme. We're talking about actually a revenue system yeah. and, and an equitable assessment of that and taxation. This is one of many unique. Circumstances which kills me because unique is an absolute, and this is certain there are no absolutes yeah. as far as it's going. The other, the other thing I would just say to keep in mind is that you know the, part, the nice thing about the project at the Willard Pit is that we're redeveloping a you know kind of a brownfield right. area, and it's you know going to generate a lot more taxes than it is currently right now. Yeah, and solar so, rays are more valuable than dirt. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good so, um, so it's going to be a net benefit to the city as well as just the renewable energy yeah, benefit. That, all, all of that's so to all the good. I, as I said, my frustration is with the, the state's cobbled mechanism and putting the onus on communities to try and broker these things, which actually, in some level, puts in at uh, disadvantage. Mm -hmm. It's it's because you are literally negotiating. You have to negotiate. We don't get to. I don't get to negotiate my the taxes on my house. Yes, and, you can. You can file an abatement. I can. That's the extent of the negotiation. Then you certainly the tax advantage. Yeah. The, the advantage to goes to the city in that case. Yeah. In this case, not so much so. But and I'd encourage you to go because ATB is the ultimate people's court. You can pound <laughs> on the table and make your case. All right. Well, I'll, 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 I'll consider that. <laughs> but it, I'm very. I'm actually very intrigued with why the wise individuals on the appellate tax board. Why those commissioners have been spitting out the different ways cities and towns have been trying to tax these things. So I'm very intrigued, and I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to them and being able to translate the gobbledygook next time we get together. Um, so what, uh, oh, no, oh, Councilor. I, I'm wondering where on the map this is, this property, because it says in the order uh, map 35, and I'm looking at Birch Pitts Road in there. Councilor, I think the councilor next to you can tell you just where it is. Yeah. That's in the heart of Ward 6. That's the Willard. It's the Willard gravel pit um, yes. where there's going to be a marijuana cultivation facility. Oh, it's all of this. Okay. And then there's, it's going to be the marijuana, there's solar, and then open space right conservation okay. land. What a combination. The marijuana yeah. part. Then, Dog from part. then no. after no. that. That's, that's the other. So the other. Yeah. We'll give just right. Councillor. Uh, We're Council having a Barger. very good Just side conversation. Did you, uh, Thank you. Did, <laughs> did Councillor Barja answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Now I know. Where, now we see what's going on. Excellent. Yeah. It's in her hood for sure in Ward Six. So, are there any other questions on this one? Then, uh, all in favor of uh, a positive recommendation, finance. Just say aye. 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 Opposed. 
No? All right. Moving right along. Um, this is 18165. This is an order authorizing the payment of prior year bills. Be it ordered that the City Council authorizes payment of a prior fiscal year bill from 2018 related to the credit card fees for the parking garage and the parking kiosks. Um, in June of 2018, Bank of America Merchant Services for $3,156.91. And also in June of 2018, Bank of America Merchant Services for $2,158.33. Motion of finance. A motion. Second. Second. And the mayor can explain why these just showed up. These were bills that arrived in at the end of June and were not able to be paid in time by the June the July of, one uh, fiscal year. By the July one fiscal year. So because they're being paid in another fiscal year, we have to have you authorize it. Any questions on this one from the yes. uh, councilor Scarra? Um, have we determined yet whether the benefit of taking credit cards outweighs the fee? Um, Funny you should ask that, because I'm going to be bringing forward some information about that at the next meeting, okay. at the next city council okay. meeting, that will involve some analysis on that. I mean, I think the benefits have been um, that customers um, like it, and um, and we have far fewer issues in the garage with people who pull up to the gate and don't have any money on them and don't have quarters or don't have change. So I think at, from a customer service standpoint, it's been very positive, um, but obviously, if you saw the editorial in the Gazette recently, you know, credit card fees mm -hmm. eat into, you know, the cost of things. So, um, but it's sort of a cost of doing business because fewer, fewer people carry cash and want to have, use plastic. So, so, but I'll actually, um, relative to it, an order I'm going to be bringing forward, I'm going to provide some data on that. So, yeah, have a memo that'll be coming forward, I think, at the next meeting that'll provide some info, updates on that. Great. So, Councilor Klein? So that just makes me wonder, um, is this for the entire year, these amounts, or is that just for the month of June? Uh, these are, um, let me just, you can tell you. Um, the, uh, one of them for 2158 is the June 2018 uh, fee. That one's the June 2018 fee. And then the other one is for the, is also for June as well. We have different servicing for like the garage as well as the kiosks themselves. The kiosks and the garage are separate systems uh, with separate proprietary systems. So we have to use a third party to manage those transactions. So we're so. paying something like $5,300 a month just for those fees. That is correct. And it's based on a percentage of the transactions. So. Um, do you know off the top of your head what a typical monthly cash flow is from the garage and the, and the kiosk? I don't have that information. At the that would kind of put it in perspective yeah. if yeah. we were. But as I said, I'll be providing some detailed information to you next month about so stay that. tuned at the next Yeah. Month. I just didn't come prepared to talk about it tonight. Mm -hmm. um, um, any other questions on this one? Then uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, Getting near the end, um, on the recommendation of the mayor, this is 18167, in order to authorize using $3,600 from the Senior Center Gift Fund for financial aid for different programs. Order that up to $3,600 in the fiscal year 2018 uh, funds from the city Senior Center Gift Account be used to provide financial assistance to seniors to attend fee-based programs offered at the Senior Center, provided that each participant a participating senior meet financial aid guidelines established by the senior services director and that such assistance be limited to more than to no more than one hundred and fifty dollars per person do we have a motion of finance make a motion second second okay. so one of the things that director uh, Westberg has been focusing on at the senior center is trying to make um, programs uh, there just more accessible to a broader um, reach of seniors and particularly low-income seniors um, and looking at you know pricings for you know for you know um, yoga classes <laughs> or things like that um, and so one of the ideas that she's come up with is to create this basically a financial aid fund um, which would be uh, be able to provide seniors who qualify and meet certain guidelines with um, Basically, it's a, it will be a reduced price on, uh, in this case, right now, as she rolls it out, it's, it's going to be for health and wellness programs. 
such as the fitness center, fitness classes, cooking classes, things like that. Um, because she really believes that, that there's, um, while we try to keep our fees low, um, we also, because we have to pay for staff and everything, this is a way to do that. It would be, um, it would be invisible to the rest of the population. Um, you know, it would be, you know, there'd be a, 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 you know, the whole means test thing would be done confidentially. Um, and then people would have a, a card that would be redeemable, like all the other members um, toward programs. They would just be paying a lower price for that $15 worth of value. So, so that is her initiative. And so this basically is going to take some uh, $3,600 from the gift fund and move it over and establish this financial aid fund. Um, and she's also talked about, you know, potentially, you know, doing some, even some fundraising to try to add to that fund as well. Um, questions, Culture Dwight, did you have uh, a Just actually, uh, I'm, I think this is a great program. And, and I, in, in the director's uh, letter to us, of course, she uh, attaching it, sort of subscribing along with the same criteria for SNAP benefits, um, I, I, and you answered the, my one of my bigger concerns was the, uh, the discretion mm -hmm. aspect. And I'm, I, this is a kind of direction that I wanted and hoped that I would see the senior center going in and I think this type of innovative programming actually reaffirms my affirmative vote for Director Westbrook. So that's, I felt that needed saying. So. Okay. Well, Council Lubar. Yes, and um, I support this. And it's in dire need. I think definitely that the new director is in the right direction because I have talked with some of the seniors who can't afford some of the classes that they have right now. Mm -hmm. So this is opening the doors and I'm very pleased with this. So you may or may not know the, the um, bistro. Uh, yes. she just reopened uh, the bistro and um, we actually hired a, um, a nutritionist who's also a chef and he has been really working to prepare both really healthy but also affordable meals mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, I, and, and also at a price point, like it's $3 basically for seniors for a lunch and it's a really healthy, nutritious lunch. And I was there today and the, there was people waiting outside the door um, to eat there. It's only two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, but, um, but again, uh, trying to create an affordable meal option for seniors. Um, and actually, members of the community can actually buy the lunches as well, only to go. You can't eat it there, um, but you pay a $7 rate. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that is sort of a community rate, but part of it is to help underwrite um, keeping the prices low for seniors. So, um, so it's just another area where she's been trying to focus on health and nutrition, bring back the bistro program, and, um, and also you know, uh, keep it affordable. So. Dr. Donald, you had a question? Uh, it seems like the 150 should be 180. Is that correct? I mean, the letter says that. Yeah, the letter says 180, but the order yeah. says 150. $3,600 for t a full year for 20 people is 180 per year. Okay, so that must be a uh, must be a Scrivener's error then. So in the in the order, you mean? In the order. Yeah. So you would have us change to 180. That would be fine if you could please. Or you can ha finance can do it if it wants. It might be better. Mm -hmm. um, then do we have a? Um, I um, move to amend, amend the order finance. to 180. Is that good with you? All right. All in favor of the 180 amendment in finance, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So, uh, are there any more questions for the mayor? Hearing none, then all in favor of the motion as amended, please say aye. 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 And our last order is 18168, an order to authorize gift acceptance from the source uh, for culvert on Park Hill Road. Where is an existing culvert located on Park Hill Road between Autumn Drive and Whittier Street is undersized and in disrepair, and whereas the culvert is located on a tributary to an ecologically important stream and is listed as a priority culvert for replacement for the state to provide <coughs> terrestrial and aquatic species connectivity between upstream and downstream wetland areas, improve habitat to cold water fishery uh, 
fishery stream and increase <coughs> flood period hydraulic conveyance and improve the condition of the culvert to minimize city required maintenance. That's a mouthful. And whereas in August 2018, the Northampton Department of Public Works received a grant for engineering design and services from the Massachusetts Department of Ecological Resources uh, for which engineering design for the culvert replacement will be completed using the Massachusetts stream crossing standards. And whereas the Northampton Department of Public Works has been offered material labor and construction oversight services for the replacement of the Park Hill Road culvert, associated paving and relocation of a water main to accommodate the new culvert donated from Eversource Energy. And whereas Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A and a half provides that the acceptance of gifts of tangible personal property require a vote of the City Council and approval of the Mayor. Um, now therefore it be ordered that the City Council hereby authorizes the Northampton Department of Public Works to accept the gift from Eversource Energy of Materials, Labor and Construction Oversight Services for the culvert replacement on Park Hill Road culvert associated paving and relocation of a water main to accommodate the new culvert. We have a motion and finance. A motion. Second. Second. Any questions for the Mayor? So, this, so the, yeah, so this is an interesting project because we had been doing some design work on it and um, using some grant funds uh, and with our engineer Ty and Bond. And, um, and basically, they also were doing work for Eversource. And I guess uh, Eversource was looking for a project um, to be able to uh, make this donation. And so we got connected. So basically, they're going to pay for it. And so, in, and it sort of serves two purposes because it it's currently like a 21 inch culvert right now, and it's going to be upgraded to a larger culvert, um, and and then what's called a um, uh, it's called a um, what do they call it? An, uh, what's it called? Accommodate. It's an open bottom design. So apparently, it not only serves as a culvert, but it also allows wildlife to use the tunnel to use as a tunnel, basically, um, which again is more ecologically friendly. So um, so basically we're asking you to accept this basically free gift from Eversource, uh, which is valued, you know, we estimate between one to $200,000 in terms of the cost. Oh. Don't do away. Um, Ever, we're not Eversource clients, so it's, uh, it's odd, of, isn't it? Yes, yes that, odd. I mean, I would assume it's because of the proximity to the East Hampton boundary, which I believe the yeah. East Hampton is an Eversource client. But yes, um, again, it's it's less related to their utility work. Um, reading between the lines, I believe that they um, had done some work somewhere else and had not, and had I think run afoul of some um, some. Uh, wetlands rules or ecological rules an and so this I believe is a is a is an offset for that so I <coughs> again I in terms of the project itself I think they were literally working with Ty and Bond to um, to come up with a project like this and Ty and Bond said well we're working <coughs> in Northampton on a culvert like this so oh, this is like penance Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, you're right. <laughs> uh, penance, or you could call it an administrative consent order uh, with <laughs> <Yeah>. a penalty. <laughs> uh, no, not, uh, so the guns to their head on this one. Non Catholic uh, <laughs> interpretation. All right, so the altruism is pretty much what we would expect from an yeah. energy system. But yes, no, it but was not a picked up the phone out of the blue and yeah. said, uh, so yes, they, they have a need. And, you know, and, and sometimes you see this in. Um, you know, uh, wetland remediation, where right. you have to build a wetland somewhere else to remediate for something that you have to Well, that's, I mean, that's, that's so what I found puzzling, because it seems to me whatever violation that occurred probably occurred in some one of their client communities, and that... I, I don't know the details, and we're not privy I'm to not that, so... I'm not looking to give to us in the take it's not really cold. change their mind. <laughs> yes, right. and, and again, I think they were... I think the requirement was they needed to do something within the watershed of the Connecticut River, um, and this qualifies, you know, this meets that criteria. Excellent. So, um, and again, it's a, it'll be a significant savings and an important culvert, um, you know. As culverts go. As culverts go. <laughs> Any other uh, questions on this one? Are we good? Then all in uh, favor of taking Eversource's money, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? 
And that's a, for their material labor and construction. Yes, it's not exactly. A, not actually not the money. money. They're going to give us the actual things of value. Yeah. Yeah. The gift. Um, we can right. accept their money anytime. And, right. th and that's all that's on the agenda. So we do have a motion to adjourn finance. Okay, John. Second. Second. Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, now the full city council is going to go through these financial orders. The first is 18161, order authorizing the mayor to accept industrial park lot and allow its use uh, for Damon Road reconstruction. Is there a motion? Second. 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 Made and second. Any discussion on this? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Councilor Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. 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 Order is approved. Next is 18162, an order authorizing waiver of right of first refusal and Conservation Commission acceptance of Park Hill Road land. To approve. And second, any discussion? Roll call. Councilor Bidwell. Uh, Councilor Bidwell. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take this one. Okay. Okay. Councilor Carney. Yes. 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 Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. And Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Order is approved. 18163 in order to appropriate funds for the uh, for community preservation purposes. Move to approve. Second. Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? Fairly routine transfer. Um, roll call. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. And Councillor Carney. Yes. Order is approved. 18164. <coughs> in order to authorize a pilot agreement with CED Northampton Solar LLC. To approve. Made by Councillor Labar. Second. Seconded by Councillor Klein. Any discussion? Uh, my understanding is before second reading, we're going to get information about terms. Good. Okay. I can't wait. <laughs> Good thing we got a covert. Um, <laughs> any other discussion? Councilor Klein, I think, uh, Sherry, did you have something? No, no. It's it's bad it's covert just, joke. It's, it's oh, okay, uh, sorry. A covert <laughs> joke. Oh, classic. <laughs> I want a shrubbery. <laughs> Hope you didn't get it from your coffee table book, a thousand and one covert <laughs> <laughs> Um All right, well, sounds like we're ready for a roll call. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Large. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Sierra. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Order is approved. Next, an order authorizing the payment of a prior year bill. Move to approve. Second. Second by Councillor Bidwell. Any discussion? Um, roll call. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Carney. <coughs> yes. Uh, that order is approved as well. 18167, an order authorized $3,600 from Senior Center Gift Fund for financial aid program. To approve. Second. Made by Councillor Labarge. Second by Councillor Dwight. Any discussion? Whenever we're ready, we can have a roll call. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Approved on first reading. Next, 18168, in order to authorize gift acceptance from Eversource for culvert on Park Hill Road. Move to approve. Second. Or second. As, as, as amended in finance. Right. So the $180 amendment. That was the previous one for the senior center. Oh, I'm sorry. Which was, as that's you say, what, that's what I meant to say. Sorry. Unfortunately, we can't add more to the gift. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. But this was made and seconded. I heard the motion. Who was the second? I think it was. It was Councilor Councilor Klein. And the second was Councillor Klein. Okay. Um, any discussion? Any culvert jokes? Not this time. Not? Uh, roll call. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. That is approved on first reading. The next four are all on second reading. 18155 in order to authorize the municipal agreement for Greenfield Community College to use the city's fiber network. Move Move to second. Seconded. Any discussion on second reading? Roll call. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. 
order is approved. 18156. In order to rescind borrowing authorizations for rail trail access and Mineral Hills land acquisition. Move to approve. And second and any discussion. Roll call. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Karn. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. And Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Uh, approved 18158 in order to apply bond premium to installation of our Canem Field play structure. Move to approve. Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion on second reading? Roll call, please. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. And Councilor Shara. Yes. Uh, and finally, it was approved 18159 uh, in order to authorize borrowing and grant application for Florence Recreation Fields. Move to approve. That was a good motion. Is there a second? Made and seconded. All right. Any discussion? Roll call. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Sheriff. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Okay. Four financial orders sent to the mayor for his consideration. Um, any new business? Is there a motion to adjourn? Move so to adjourn. And any opposed to adjournment? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Eric, you can't be opposed. <laughs> oh, we've adjourned. But we can talk now. Thank you very much.